All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? We're going to be taking a look at some Mardu today, mid-range with a lot of stuff going on. And the main reason we wanted to play this deck is because, really, there's like a lot of new cards in Dominator United. I still haven't gotten to a deck list yet, and this deck plays three of them. So there's going to be a lot to look at and a lot to learn today. So strap yourselves in. This should be a fun one. All right, y'all, before we get into today's deck list, I want to tell you, I, there's a cool thing you can do right now where you can go and for absolutely free, you could learn a brand new skill and you can do this with Skillshare. They're sponsoring today's video and honestly, they have an opportunity for you to learn all kinds of stuff. Check out the lessons they have. I mean, if you want to learn something for animation or music or photography, or maybe even start a business or learn a language, or even just increase your productivity, they have lessons on everything. As a matter of fact, I use it myself. I've been looking at a course from Mustafa Nassar where he's teaching me how to be better at DaVinci Resolve because I want to do better editing and make a better product for you. So yeah, even for me, it's useful. And maybe you're thinking you don't have time to learn anything. Truthfully, look at this list of lessons I'm taking. Like they are very short, easy to consume, and I can do them between doing a bunch of other stuff whenever I just have free time. They also offer lessons in five different languages. So they make it very accessible. Now, whether you're trying to learn something for professional purposes, or maybe you just want to make that garden better you got out front, you can check out Skillshare and they have something for you. Oh, and don't forget the first 1000 of you that use my link below, you get a month free. So again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's go get into that deck list. All right, so the fun thing about what Mardu has available to it right now is we're able to really do pretty much whatever you want, right? We can do recursion, we can have flyers, we can play planeswalkers, we can have a lot of removal. So you kind of have to pick and choose how much of each you want and see if you can fit it all together. But well, as I say that, this list is trying to do all of it. So <laughs> let's hop in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we got three voltage surge. We do have a fair amount of way to make artifacts here. So this can give us a little bit of extra removal. However, there is a possibility this eventually becomes some other removal card, but I'm gonna leave it in there for now. And we got two fateful absence, cause yeah, just good. Uh, the first of the new cards though, that we get to play with in this list is Phyrexian Missionary. And this is a card I've been trying to look for spots for. And I think here it actually works out very well for two reasons. One, we are playing a fair amount of pain lands and such, so this can help us recoup some of that life loss, which is pretty nice. And then if we do lose a big or key creature later in the game, this could let us get it back into our hand and into play. Now, the other cool thing, though, is that we have some other things that work with this as well, so we'll get to that here as we go through this list. Then we have two Infernal Grass for more removal, Tenacious Underdog, because it's just damn good. We are playing a couple of Rite of Oblivion, because this card exiles things. And, honestly, there's artifacts and enchantments you want to be able to get rid of, and unless I wanted to play something specific and just white itself anyway, eh, this seems more than fine. Blood Tithe Harvester. Obviously, if you're playing red-black, this is one of the cards you're going to be looking for. We're playing some Restoration of Iganjo, and there's a reason for this too that you're going to see in just a second. Then we have three Lil Allen of the Veil. No surprise, the card's still good. We're still playing it. Three copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I know, now, I want to say, we did talk about this on stream earlier today, that some people are really enamored with this card, and they always want four of. This is a list where four could be useful, but I think I'm just going to go with three. I don't know if it's just enough there for me to care about it to go higher. And I sort of wanted to make room to experiment with other things. Could be a wrong decision, but we'll see as we play the games. Then we have one Archangel Wrath. This is one of the new ones. Honestly, I wanted to squeeze two of these into the list. I just don't know where they go right now. But this card, really, really impressive. It's a four mana, three, four flyer. You can kick her for black or kick her for red or both. And then you, for each time you kicked it, you get to deal two damage to a target. And the awesome part about that is the angel has lifelink. So that's actually deal two, gain two. And this is a three, four flyer that sits out there with lifelink and flying. So this is great. Like this card, hopefully it comes up. I know we're only playing one copy, but I'm probably going to be trying to figure out how to squeeze another one into this list because it is a bomb against a lot of the aggro decks. And then Sarah Paragon. This is one of the things that makes... Phyrexian Missionary is so good, right? Because if I'm blocking with it, well, then I can go ahead and get it back and kick it and then get something else back from my graveyard. And we kind of keep that whole cycle going, which is super sweet, right? But there's a lot of other things you can do with this in the deck, right? You can get back a Fable of the Mirror Breaker that would have gone away. You could get a Blood Tithe Harvester so you can get more blood tokens and kill things off. 
So you could kill something, have it go to the graveyard, get it back, play it, and then grow your number of, of uh, blood tokens. So that's actually pretty sweet. There's a lot of little neat things you can do in this deck. So I'm hoping this comes up as well. Also, getting to reuse Restoration of a Ganjo is nothing either. You could also reuse uh, Liliana. So lots of just fun stuff here. So I'm, I'm super, super excited about these. And then we've got one Wandering Emperor, which, to be honest, with the removal that we have, don't know if this is what we want it to be. Maybe it should be the other Archangel. I could be talked into that. However, for now, we're going to leave it be as just the one Wandering Emperor. Then we have two Shieldred the Apocalypse, because I know, I know, every time, every time I have a deck list with black in it, like, we kind of have to just play Shieldred. I don't know what to tell you. I think this is just going to be our life for the next, what, two years while it's in standard? The card's absurd, y'all. It's great. You should play it. Okay, nice thought. Then we have Meat Hook Massacre for two copies, just as a catch-all in case things go sideways. Right? Then we have four planes, one Takanuma, four Caves of Kolos, four Shattered Sanctum, four Haunted Ridge, four Sulphur Spring, four Sundown Pass. Now, yes, this does mean that we have several lanes that come into play tapped, which is kind of annoying. But at the same time, we have a fair amount that don't, so we should be okay. But we did have to play a full set of pain lands like we were talking about earlier, so those cards that do gain life could end up being pretty important for us. But yeah, that's it. We're going to let y'all enjoy the games, and as always, catch up with me on the back end of the video because I will be talking about updates we're going to make to this based on what we learned from our games. So have fun, and I'll catch you on the other side. Which would make me sad, but if it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. Uh, this is a mulligan, though. Mm-mm-mm. Whew. I guess we keep this... I don't, I mean, I don't know what we put back here. Probably, I guess it has to be Voltage Surge. Because, I mean, we're either using it on turn one or we're not. And since these have to come to play tapped. Uh, ooh, that actually makes life a little better. We can live with that. I mean, we got to still get to the mana for it. At the beginning of each player's draft, that player may draw an additional card. If they do, they can't cast spells this turn. That costs two or more. Oh, yeah, I'll take another card then. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I wasn't going to do that anyway. <laughs> that's That's fine. Cool to see somebody playing with that card. But, uh, sure. <laughs> They're just doubling down on him. Okay. Is what it is. Neat. Uh, I will take action because we're still looking for more lands. All right. I mean, we're going to be pretty far behind. At some point, I need to just save the block, to be honest with you, because like, I'm sure they're just sitting on counters at this point. Uh, let's go with one of these since we have a backup, and we know the first one's going to get countered. Uh, of course, no surprise. No attacks. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Opponent wants to Delver and do something? What is something? Sure. I mean, at this point, I guess they're just playing to protect stuff. I mean, we're only at nine, so getting rid of threats is kind of a big deal here. 
Um, sadly, we got to go with this first because the life gain from Shieldred might matter as we're so low. Yep. I knew there were just counters behind, but like, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Hey, you're nifty. You do lifelink. Let's see if we can resolve you. No counter, no counter, no counter, please. Whoa. Okay. Uh, do I get back a shield red and just try that? All right, I guess so. They still don't know we have the second shield red, obviously. Okay, well that's probably gonna be enough to get there then. If they're just playing that out freely, we're probably in trouble. Let's see though. Okay, that helps. They're gonna fading hope that. All right, then we're dead. I mean like, that's basically it. We're, we're dead then. Uh, Cause we can't even play that. Cause that just leads to us dying. So we just gotta do this. Actually, can't even do that. Got to do it for one. And if they just save their thing, we don't have a choice. Because we have to play around and make disappear as well. <laughs> it's like, like, I'm on the good game train. I'm assuming you have a counter. Lethal36 says hi. As does Anime Rose. How's it going? They're digging, so I guess we're not dead. That's cool. It also means we get to resolve this now. No kicker, but, I mean, we get a lifelinker out, which is pretty key right now. All right. I mean, I, I might have accidentally gave a early GG's. I thought we were, we were going to be toast here, but hold up. All right, well, the deck's trying to do some things. Still got to take one point here. All right, sure. We can live with that. So many of these mono blue decks lately on the ladder, and I think they're geared specifically for the mono black fights, which I get. But they seem kind of medium to bad against other things. All right, countered another shieldred. All right, Delver. Let's make sure that doesn't get to do too much damage to us. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. And this is kind of the problem I see for those blue decks. I rerun into this a lot where it's like... You know, once you get one or two things that stick, that seems to just be it. Uh, we'll pass. Yeah, opponent says GG. All right, cool. In the last two years, I haven't drafted at all, surprisingly. I think because I just haven't had a reason or motivation to do it. I think if I knew enough people content-wise wanted to see it, I would consider it, but... Uh, we've talked about it before, though, on the channel. Like, the way I would do it, people wouldn't want to see it, which is the main reason I haven't. Because, like, I would go through the whole... Man, that's a lot of underdogs. I would go through a lot of the process of the draft and the deck building, but I wouldn't really want to spend the time playing the games. And I think if you're into draft, you probably wouldn't enjoy that. But, you know, I've asked people, and multiple times it's been, like, 60-40... 
If it ever gets to like 50-50, then I'll probably just go for it. But we're not there yet. Ooh, Liliana, you are neat. So if I attack, they might block with pack leader trade. We could play Liliana, cost them their speaker, and then hope they don't have a hasty thing to kill Liliana. Or we could attack, play underdog. No, I think I'm just going to attack. I think I'm going to go with that plan. If we just lose Liliana, it's fine. Oh, they're not even going to bite. Interesting. Okay, well, then we're not going to play Liliana. We're going to do this. And pass. Uh, sure. All right. Okay, come on, real removal. Hey, that kind of sort of counts, right? I mean, we have to exile one of our underdogs, but, you know, cost of doing business, I guess. Man, I would have given a lot for a land there, though. Seriously. We need to be able to set up some stuff next turn. We haven't been able to... I mean, last turn we at least got to play this, but... I need to get some combinations of things down, and this is not helping us. Yep. It's pretty good. Um, hmm. Hmm. That is when that dies. So we can eventually get them to sacrifice it. That would be fine. I think I'm going to do this. See if we can open up the door for possibly multiple plays next turn. No attacks. Oh, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. Oh, that's tough. Yep. Dang. All right, no blocks. I'm just going to take it here. I'll block a bigger hit next turn. Okay, well, that's just a little bit late. Uh, we need all the mana, so we can't have the land come into play tapped. I mean, I guess we just put Underdog in and then just go for Liliana plus Absence. I think is what we're doing here. Man, we're close, but not quite where we want to be. <laughs> uh, all right, how do we do this? We can get rid of this. Make them sack a thing. It's probably going to be this. Damn. I mean, I guess we just make them sacrifice first, because there could be a world where they try to sacrifice Beast Caller and put the counters on Halana and Elena, and then we kill that. So, like, let's, let's do it in that order. I mean, they probably won't. But there's a chance. Okay. That's, that's what we assumed was going to happen. But you never know. All right. Let's pass. And I'm just going to gamble that they don't have a way to protect their creature. I love Alana Alana. I think it's a great, great card. There's also a chance they might try to, like, tail swipe on Halana and Elena here or something. And we can get rid of it. Not a lot of value, but enough that we have to at least consider some possibilities here. And if we can live through the turn... Oh, no! <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, wow. Um, those are things. 
Okay, let's just get... We're gonna have to kill this, because we can't have the Devastator being huge coming through. God, that was such a good turn for them. Yeah, I don't, we can't win now, actually. I'm pretty sure there's, we're out. Yeah, you just attack with everything, opponent. Like, we, we got nothing. Oh, man, this makes next turn even harder. I mean, we just go to four. Like, if you have the burn spell next turn, we're, we're dead anyway. Oh, that's my yeah, Takanuma's not going to cut it. Golly. Maybe if it was some other removal card or whatnot, we could have considered it, but... And this is a turn behind. It'd be nice if we could have made the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I just can't think of a way we get out of this. Because now we kind of have to get rid of one of these. But, what? You know what I was just thinking? I was actually about to just say, like, all I have to do is blitz this. <laughs> I was literally like, I'm at three, not one. for some re Or two. For some reason, I was processing I was at two. And then I went, wait, I'm at three. And I was like, well, if I just do this, the opponent's dead. Unless they have, I don't know, a thing. Well, no. You, yeah, if they had, I guess, uh, Tamiyo safekeeping. We would have lost because they could have gained two. But if they did, they would have just protected Halana and Elena. So there's no way that's in hand. Uh, no, we're going to mulligan. Oh, okay. That's a statement. Uh, hmm. All right. I'm going to bank on resolving that shield at some point in the future. <laughs> That's basically what this was. No idea if it's a good idea or not. We're about to find out. Right now, it looks like a terrible idea. Yeah, I would think the lore master has a place somewhere. I just don't know what it is yet. But I like the idea of it. Yeah, no blocks. Hey, we did it. We found a thing. I think we're just going to go ahead and attack here. See what the opponent wants to do. Maybe use a removal card on my underdog. Cut down. Makes sense. Not even mad about it. Okay, this should buy us a little bit of time. Now, if we draw a land, we could just play Shieldred next turn. If not, we're going to play Restoration and, and go from there, I guess. All right, so we took care of that part of business. So then now, what do we do? All right, I'm going to have to assume that Shieldred's going to die here. So, hmm. Let's plus, and I think... Man, this sounds crazy. But I might just get rid of Ride of Oblivion. And that's probably the wrong call. <clears throat> I mean, it does get to be used from our graveyard technically, but they're going to remove it whenever they attack with their trespasser, so we can't really worry about that. Because they're going to get the best of everything. Kill our Shieldred, remove our rights, exactly, and then kill Liliana. So, like, this is exactly the turn they want. The only thing... Yeah, that's... Let's see where this goes now, though. Sorry, I'm not interested in dying that doesn't particularly help us much, because we can't kill the Trespasser with it. Because we don't have a card to discard. Alright. Uh, anybody on Team G-Gen specialize in draft? Uh, actually, Nerd Girl does a lot of drafting. All right, 
What do we got? Come on, big money. No whammies. And they have a shielded. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and kill that now. Was going to try to save up and do something cool to get rid of the trespasser, but that's obviously not a thing. That doesn't help. So, yep. We're probably just dead now, being it too. Yeah, we're dead. GG's. Ah, uh, that one sucked. We didn't draw hardly anything usable there. I mean, we kind of have to keep this one, right? Well, not really. I mean, hmm. Because we can't really cast anything on two because these are all tapped. But I kind of want to try anyway because we already have all of our land. So, F it. Let's do it. We have two turns to draw an untapped red or black. That's got to happen, right? Or not. The deck doesn't care about our feelings. I mean, honestly, if this is Celestia Enchantments, then if we don't play this on two, okay. Well, that's less bad. Still bad, but less bad. Ah, dang it. Well, we knew what the risk was. We knew what the risk was. Oh boy. All right. So I think next turn we just play Fable. And then if we have to, we can do some combination of Harvester plus Rights the following turn. Oh, actually, no, because we'd, we'd still be a Black Source short. Oh, no, no. No, we won't, because we'll be able to tap this for red. All right. Okay. This is kind of fine. Hmm, I was just thinking I was going to want to get rid of a, uh... Hallowed Haunting, but... Oh, well, that's a convenient card to show up here. Hmm. I don't know if we'd get rid of anything. I mean, a land would let us see something else, but we're about to clear the board anyway, so... Yeah, just zero, because all these cards are good. And I actually want to build up mana so we can do more than one thing on coming turns, so sure. That was a very well-timed meat hook. And then we can play this, get rid of a treasure if we want to, to destroy something. Or not treasure, but a blood token. I mean, we could be sneaky with our Wandering Emperor, too, though. Hmm. What do we do, team? What do we do? Because the problem is, we're going to end up with stuff under enchantments. That means we're ultimately not going to get to use stuff with Paragon. But yeah, I mean, I guess we do that. I mean, our hand's still pretty strong, so I'm, I'm willing to take the risk. They look like they're struggling a little bit. Let's take their best card. If they end up playing a Hallowed Haunting next turn, we can just sack anything to, to kill the Hallowed Haunting, so we're not worried about it. All right. Visitor, sure. Though, I guess now, if you can exile something, is is it Reflections? or I guess it has to be a Reflection, right? Because right now, because I got rid of the Blood Token, the Harvester doesn't kill anything. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, wait, no, you're just putting Hold for Ransom on it. Okay, that's fine. Sure, no blocks. That is not at all what I thought was going to happen. Not really wanting to play the Paragon since we don't have anything in the graveyard yet. 
Uh, I will have to use this now if I want to be able to kill that, though. And this I can eventually pay seven, right? Uh, can't attack or block. Oh, I can still tap if I needed to. Uh, hold for ransom controller sacrifices it and draws it. So here's an interesting thing. We could kill both the opponent's creatures here and then play this and then get this back out of the yard. Which is kind of goofy, but I'm in. All right. Oh, no, I can't. I'm going to be a mana short. Uh, that's all right. We can just do it next turn. Same difference, though. Actually, I don't even know if we... Get... We'll wait till next turn when we can do it. Because there's no point just offing this if we don't have to. All right. Because it is possible to get rid of the reflections and, you know, then we just are playing reflections out of the yard and all that. Speaking of which, we will not be playing the reflections. All right. We'll make a 2-2 two -two duder and block. There we go. Cool. Opponent goes first. Uh, yes, we will keep. We can at least Voltage Surge into Underdog and then see what happens after that. Yep, this is definitely an easy keep. Alright. Come on, give us a reasonable target. They are not. Oh boy. Alright, I was hoping one of those first two cards would have at least been a land. That would have made us feel a lot better. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, I guess if you're not going to have any type of bounce spells, we at least do this. Oh, no counter. Well, at least no creature counters. They could have had, like, negate or something. But that's good to know. It's good to know. All right, attacking. Wandering Emperor? Yep. Not a surprise. Now you've done it. Hats coming off. Done. Uh All right. Man, I kind of want to just play this right now, to be honest with you. Like, All right, I'm going to do it just to keep pressure up, if nothing else. Because, I mean, we don't have anything in the yard. There's a good chance this might end up exiled as well, so might as well be able to do something here. hey -o. Uh, Bleh. That's a problem. Oh boy. All right, I guess we're just not attacking. I mean, it sucks, but like I couldn't justify going in and then them getting, I don't know, another wandering emperor or something right now. We'd have been in worse shape. If I had at least had the mana for maybe like a meat hook or something, I could have justified it, but This is better. All right. All right. Here's what we can do. We can target AO. See if they counter. Oh, it just died. What? What? Oh. Really? All right. I would have never guessed. That's, uh, okay. 
I don't know what this deck is, y'all. I don't even know what I, like, I'm just making random decisions. I have zero idea what the opponent's trying to do right now. Like, we had a bad draw to start with, but, like, I got no clue where this is going. Like, there's AO and Wandering Emperor. Like, look at the selection of cards here. All right, no more Wandering Emperors. That's good. I'm assuming there's no farewell, but hell, there could be, I guess. See, I, pff, I, pff, I, pff. <laughs> I what, what, what even, what, <laughs> what deck is playing farewell with Adelines? Like, I mean, like, what? <laughs> What even is this world? I told y'all, I'm like, I no clue what we're playing around. I'm just trying. I don't know if I'm supposed to play this or not. Honestly, I don't know if there's another farewell. I don't know what the hell is happening. I'm just gonna play this for zero, maybe? I uh, I don't even know. I might need to kill an Adeline or something again. What the hell, man? Um, Man, I'm shook, y'all. I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, Yeah, we're just gonna end the turn. I got nothing. I don't know what's happening. All right, wedding announcement, sure. <clears throat> All right, there might be some random value. We'll try this for one. Okay, that worked. I don't know if they're hand, they're just down to lands in hand or what right now. Like, look at this deck, y'all. Like, I, what's, like, seriously? I don't, <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh, this is great. And I'm not even mad at the opponent. Like, credit for trying something different. Honestly, I, I am just baffled. Like, I feel like it's just random pile of rares and mythics in those colors. Sure, I guess. I mean, nothing else got countered, so I mean, I guess we'll try and we'll just shoot to fairy. Yeah, we kind of have to. All right. Uh, which of these is? Oh, they're both damage land, so it doesn't really matter. All right. Okay, there's no counters. I, I got, okay, I don't know what we beat. I really don't. Just the selection of spells that they played. And we were even stuck on colored mana for a while. I don't know how, yeah, I don't know how we won that. I am really, really stunned. Like we, we got just enough card quality to be able to survive that, but crazy. Hmm, what do we do with this? I think this is a mulligan. Yeah, that's better. Ooh, I am going to keep and get rid of a meat hook. Check that out. That's something you probably don't see too often. All right. Come on. Give us something good. Gala greeters. All right, that qualifies. Um, uh, I think I do want to kill a gala greeters. Mostly because if I wait, usually on and they have a haste thing. It's not like the best situation for us anyway. And this gives us a chance to do this, find a land, maybe put this into play later. And, oh, I was going to say, we could still draw Liliana plus other things, but 
Looks like they're on some type of mono green situation. So I'm going to put hmm, this into play. I'm trying to think which one. I Yeah, sure. Because if this is untapped next turn, we have more possible value. And then we just go ahead and play this, play Liliana, and we minus. A fight? And you think you can win. All right. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? And then if we have want to, we could discard this. Oh, you know what? They're probably about to play and invoke the ancients. <laughs> Uh, another Liliana doesn't help a lot here, though I think I might be willing to discard underdogs. Situation being what it is. And mostly because this sets up a situation where we can minus Liliana, minus Liliana, if they do make something with two tokens. Oh, Defiler, just straight up. All right. Well, that's a thing. Okay, we'll attack. We'll play a Liliana. Okay, cool. Ooh, yes, we will keep this. This is exciting. Hopefully this works out. It's going to be sad if this doesn't. Ooh, against uh, a red-based aggro. Huh, all right. And, okay. That's not the worst thing. I guess we go underdog here. Oh, see, I actually consider doing Harvester and then maybe having a way to get rid of something, but. All right, adversary works. You big, we're gonna lose our uh, underdog, obviously, but that's fine. Like, it's kind of weird now that we know the opponent doesn't have certain things. I guess we're just waiting to get hit with a Thundering Raiju, right? Nope, it was a Kami's player. That's way worse. Yep, that's a big hit. Alright, well, we just have to hope they don't have any more removals. Meat hook for two is kind of slick. Puts us to nine. We would take three. Go to six. Uh, if they did that and they have a Raiju, what happens? They attack for six, seven. We take one. So that'd be eight. If the math is right. Uh, but. I'm going to do this instead, because if it works, we then get to meat hook for three and possibly get rid of more things. And if we're lucky, we get to gain a couple points of life. So, we'll see. It's a bit of a gamble, but I'm just playing the upside here. Okay. I mean, if they have the cards, they have the cards. You know, what are we going to do? I mean, if you got it, just play it, opponent. I mean, we're dead. Okay, that doesn't kill us. So that actually works out okay. Alright, we go to one. Oh, to two, sorry. And then we get to meat hook for three. And then we gain four. Alright. Oh, Chandra is a good card to draw there. Oh, that's rough. 
Yep. Okay. Um. God, taking a point of damage is like serious now. Actually, we don't have to because we got the haunted ridge last time. Okay, that's fine. Okay, play you. Play that and pass. Oh boy, this is going to be close. Man, Chandra was such a good top deck for the opponent here. Yeah, I would be digging too, especially if you already have a burn spell in hand. Okay, it was a land, so we lucked out. Oh, Phoenix Chick. That's clutch. Because now we only have two turns, no matter what. I mean, we can kill the Phoenix Chick, but I mean, uh, we can do that with just one of these anyway. Ah, oh, she's at five. Gosh dang it. Um. Mmm. Man, this is so tough. Uh, I don't think we discard. Obviously not discarding either one of these. I'm just thinking about what we're going to play for the turn. Uh, damn. <laughs> it's tempting to even want to just dig with this thing. But we could gain life from killing, getting rid of the Phoenix chick. So, yeah. I mean, we don't have a choice. I don't think. I mean, we go to five. Shoot. Ah, this sucks. I need, I need them to draw a blank. At least. Ah, <laughs> this is so tough. <laughs> Uh, all right. Now, what I'm thinking about is what are the odds of me? Because I have to leave four mana, right? I could get rid of the Fable at some point to search for maybe a, a Voltage Surge or something. To yeah, But all right, we're just going to end the turn. Here's hoping. Okay, it's only another Phoenix Chick. That's, that's fine. That is totally okay. All right. I'm not overconfident. You're just All right, we go to three, which we're still in danger range, mind you. I think we have to dig for another card here. I don't think Fable's the answer. I would like to have something else here. That That is much... Oh, that's way better. Oh, that's huge. That is... Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. All right, then. Uh, let's go. Let's go. All righty. Let's do this. And we will... Wait, 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 wait. Arena. I don't, I don't want to take damage for this. Let's do that. That. Let's get colorless. Color. Uh, yeah, colorless from you, too. There we go. And then we could pay the kicker with the other ones. Actually, I just might as well just put it in there now. So Arena doesn't even get to choose. We'll make this black. We'll make this one red. There you go. We'll kick. Kick. We will... Shoot this. And shoot you. And then we'll plus one that angel. And now we should be all good to go. Ooh. Uh, oh man, that was close. All right, Brood, I gotta say, like, this was a hell of a lot of fun. Like, way more fun than I anticipated. I actually thought this may not even work. It's a giant pile jumble of cards, but it it was good. And, and it, we had, did y'all, oh, well, I'm assuming if you're watching at this point in the video, you watched the games. If you didn't, I'm very sad for you because we had a couple of come from behind victories that were fun as hell, super cool. Opponents top deck some big cards and we're still able to overcome it. Like we dealt with sweepers, we dealt with planeswalkers, we just all kinds of stuff. Like this deck is actually very versatile. The removal suite's very good. The creatures are individually very good and very powerful. Like, I yeah, this has a lot of good stuff going for it. Like this is 
this almost feels like accidentally good but it's good so yeah if you had now admittedly there's a lot of rares and mythics in this list but if you do already own them or a reasonable amount of them try to finish this off or if nothing else you know put some reasonable replacements in and try to go for it this is actually a really fun playing experience and it mostly because it left us a fun a, a ton of fun great choices pretty much at every step of the way and i think that's what i really enjoyed about it just it's probably going to play differently every game and you have fun top decks like yeah this one was a good one and now for today's card spotlight we're going to talk about kalia of the vast mostly because kalia was one of the like early planeswalkers that everybody freaked out about i guess well not planeswalkers commanders sorry there but it truthfully it was one of those commanders that everybody was like oh this is so powerful and this is too good but i think it sort of like was a good way to test the waters and like what can you do with a card and how far can you push it and you know being able to put a dragon a angel or a demon into play for free is actually pretty cool so yeah it made sense but yeah, just a really neat card all around. And the cool part about this card is it still commands value. And it's been reprinted several times. As a matter of fact, I think the latest printing is still about $8. And the older ones might be about $20. So super cool card still, super valuable. Definitely still popular among the commander community. But yeah, if you have some, these still have some value and may even be worth more than you thought. And if you're not playing it, consider it. It's actually a pretty fun and powerful card still. Now, if you enjoyed today's deck because you like quirky things, check out this tokens deck we've got going on where we have some super huge wins and even find ways to draw a pile of cards with tokens. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.